moment I eat that, that transforms me right back to my mom and dad's kitchen. So when we, when we talk about monk food, I always say that there is, we have, monk food has, um, if you come into my mom, if you come into my mom's table and she's cooking for you, there's four elements on that dinner table. I'm gonna come to this right? side. Uh, sorry. Uh, the first element, uh, you got your, your rice, you got your protein, you got your, um, uh, your broth or veggie, sometimes that's one, you know, and then you got your hot sauce. So, okay, so we're gonna do this rice. We're gonna do this sticky rice. And so what you do is you take uh, uh, sweet rice, you can buy them. You don't technically have to buy the Apple brand. Flip that around so we can see the front, because it's a beautiful oh, label. Yeah, so it's the Apple. Oh, you got both. Yeah, yeah there's, there's uh, the Apple brand, there's the Dragonfly, there's the, there's, they call it called the Three Ladies, or, or yeah, it's called Three Ladies, because there's three ladies on here. This one has an Apple, because it's called Apple. I don't know. Uh, uh, I just say, Southeast Asian marketing is not the best sometimes. So it's whatever animal or things in the front. So that, you, you can, so you get some of that, and then it's a one to six ratio, so you get some black rice. Now to sound cool and sexy, I always call it forbidden black rice, but yeah. it's black rice. Yeah. Uh, and so basically you get that and then you soak them overnight. But I would recommend if you, do, if you can get three hours of soaking, that's amazing. So you just soak it and then you strain it out and then this is what you get once you uh, get done soaking it. And so to steam it, you can do like a regular steamer or you can use these rice basket steamer. This literally is like four bucks. This thing is like seven. And that's where you just put that on, you crank the heat up in the, we go through like every month, we go through one of these baskets in the trailer because <laughs> the guys wreck it But you it guys up. are steaming a lot of rice. Yeah, yeah, we do a lot. And yeah. so, so when you put this in, it's not gonna touch the water. So people always ask, how far do I fill up the water? I just say until it doesn't, like make sure it just doesn't touch the bottom of this. So this goes in here. So this would be your steamer. Here's the cool thing we learned. This could steam veggies. This could steam yeah. anything. Like if you want to make any kind of steam veggies, you want to even like do like veggies and you want to throw your, your like, like a, a piece of like, you know, halibut or cod on top, it can steam all that too. Sure. Because as a lid, all you really need is a bowl. So, so what we'll do, in this so bowl. when do you know it's, oh. it's the right time to get rid of it though, when it's falling apart? Oh, when it's falling apart, yeah. Okay. Like, okay. When do you get rid of a, you know, like a dirty shirt, you know? Like, <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, as a college kid, you're like, yeah, I got another year on this bad boy, you know, kind of <laughs> deal. Okay, so I, I just took the rice and, uh, I just took the, uh, the black rice and the white rice. And when you soak them, you can soak them together, you know? And we're just gonna mix it up real quick here. You don't really need the water boiling to, to do this. Like when you put it in there, the water will boil, you'll be fine. So you get it out of the way right away. So literally, you just throw it in and that's it. And then what I'll do is, I'll take the bowl, throw it on top. That's kind of like your cover to keep the that's steam in. So yeah. yeah. And then I'll show you the little trick. Like once, once it gets steam in, like 20 minutes in, 15, 20 minutes in, you wanna take it out and then we're gonna, uh, you're gonna shake it and then that will come, kind of you flip it around and then you put it back for another five minutes just so that that top gets that steam. Cool. Pretty simple. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this tomato going for this uh, tomato chili sauce. With this tomato chili sauce, um, literally, this is the thing that my mom, you know, like when you get home from school and your mom's supposed to have like PB&J for you, this was our version of PB&J. It was uh, sticky rice and then this tomato chili sauce, it, you know? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll throw a little oil on here and um, you wanna help me out, Kyle? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just wanna cut these, have these. Sure. I'll just put you right over here. You can half them, <laughs> sorry. And then just put it in here. Okay. Okay, we'll get that going. Um, and then, so we'll just half these guys and throw it in there. If you want, you, if you wanna make this at home, you can literally just put this on a sheet tray, throw it in the oven on the broiler. You can do that too, you know, so completely up to, how you wanna do that. Um, and so we're gonna get that going. Uh, the next thing we are gonna get going here is the, oh, totally... okay, the next thing we're gonna get going here is the, uh, the broth. So if you could take, uh, either use chicken broth, you can use uh, pork broth, you can use whatever kind of broth you want. And we're gonna um, get ready for the mustard green here. So. Just throw the broth in. Ooh, that's bad. Okay. So one of the things is lemongrass. 
ginger, shallots, garlic, that's our mirepoix. You know, that is our, we jokingly say, that's our sofrito, right? So that, there's going to be some element of that in a lot of Hmong cooking. Um, lemongrass, you, you cut it, break it up, smell it, it actually smells like Fruit Loops. <laughs> I know, I know. I had a chef say that to me once, and I'm like, Fruit Loops? I'm going to catch you guys all smelling this lemongrass up here. Like, ah, Fruit Loops, puffing it. Okay, lemongrass, ginger, and then we're just going to let this kind of boil. And once that boils, we'll take this mustard green. So Hmong mustard greens, are it's so good. It's When I have Hmong mustard green with braised pork belly, and, and, I, and that, that fattiness of the pork belly, that, that, that little bite of the mustard green, the moment I eat that, that transforms me right back to my mom and dad's kitchen. That, to me, is the soul of Hmong food. Because it was simple. It was literally, they had a pot over a fire, and they put in bones, they put in aromatics, and they put in the mustard green, because there wasn't a lot of proteins, right? That's, you know, your vegetable. And that was your Hmong meal, and you ate that over rice. You know, so what, those four elements I told you of Hmong food, that dish there, plus some rice and low hot sauce, are all four of those elements. Okay, so we'll take the mustard green, we'll just cut them down a little bit. And then, once this kind of starts coming up, just gonna throw it in there. And then you let that wilt. Okay. So what we did with the chicken is to get that extra crispy skin, take your chicken and spatchcock it, and then open it up, and then put it on a rack, and you put it in your fridge, leave it open your fridge for a good 24 hours. It dries the skin out. So you get all that, like, you know, if, if sometimes, like, chicken gets very moist they, or they pump water in it, you get all of that out. And if you really, really want to, like, get that super, like, almost like Peking duck, you know, crispy, leave it for two days. So we've done, like, two days of it, and mm. it's super, super good. So what we'll do here is once you saw, see it kind of going here. Then, what are you using? using canola oil. Yep, just yeah. canola oil. And then you want to hear that sizzle. And literally, we're letting it sit, take a brick, something heavy, wrap it in tin foil, and then you're just gonna, on the thickest part, which is like the breast height here, we're just gonna kinda put this down, let it sit on here, and then we'll just let this press, and then we'll turn it down a little bit to 65, and you let that sit for about 15, 20 minutes, flip it, Put, have your oven at 400, put it in your oven for another like 10, 15 minutes, and you're pretty much done. It's just the simplest, yep. So by spatchcocking it, brick pressing it, what you're really getting is you're getting that uh, fast cook, but since you dried the skin out, now what you have next here is this amazing crispy skin. Does that make sense? So we're, so when, wow. when, we're, when we're thinking through this process of making monk food, my mom always says this, she says, Hmong food isn't, isn't, it's like there's not a lot of ingredients. It's just very, it's easy, it's simple, but it's complex in flavors. And my mom always says that Hmong food is all about balance, right? So that's why you have your rice. That's why you have your proteins. That's why we have our broth. That's why we have our um, hot sauce. All of that brings balance. Anyway, is there a special brick, like Cream City brick, uh, Red Building brick? Is so, any... organic, uh, Orga free, free trade brick. Sure, We're using, sure. Um, right, a right. conflict-free mortar. <laughs> uh, I don't know, what's, what's all the trigger words these days? Okay. Is it gluten-free? Yeah, gl gluten-free, dairy-free, uh, GMO. Sure, non-GMO non non -GMO brick. brick. Um, you know, locally yeah. sourced. Sure. <laughs> the aluminum foil is all messed up, oh, though. Yeah, yeah, That's... yeah. But, you know, but if you don't want a little like brick stuff in there, you're going to have to use the aluminum foil. Yeah. Sometimes it works too. If you take another pan, you throw another pan on top, but you just got to find something heavy on top, you know. So what I love about this hot sauce is it's the most simple hot sauce ever. What is, so what is unique? What's going oh, yeah, on here? Oh, yeah, sorry. Because this, this is like, I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, we have some Lake Rosé. We certainly have some Nuku from Volrath. <laughs> oh, we have yeah. a couple of cool things yeah. in our kitchen. We don't have one of those. Yeah. So <laughs> this is 12 bucks. <laughs> at any uh, Asian market from around here, you can get it's like twelve bucks. If you really want to like pay in an extra ten dollars, you can get the metal one that doesn't break. We have the metal ones because I love our boys, but we drop stuff all the time. So after buying like three of these in a row, I'm like, you know what? We're paying the extra ten dollars now. Uh, so you can so it's pestle, pestle and mortar, real simple. Okay, this is where a lot of sauces, a lot of curries. This is where life starts. This sound 
was the sound of our dinner bell. Because when my mom was making hot sauce, you hear this sound being made, it means you got 10 minutes to get yourself cleaned up and sit at the table. Then, then again, sorry, just kind of, you see that crisp? That's kind of what we're looking for. Flip it, get that bottom going, and then we're just gonna throw this in the oven and you're good to go. I mean, like dinner is served. If you want to do this at home, throw a bunch of potatoes, vegetables inside, you can totally do it too. Yeah. Yeah. Or aromatics around it. Aromatics, yep. Whatever you want, you're good to go. So it's, again, it's a really cool, it's a great technique. It also a showstopper, you know, all your friends are all like, woo, and you can charge them an extra $5. Uh, so, <laughs> that's my thing. Do you charge your friends when they come over? Well, sometimes, God pay bills, man. <laughs> you know, my buddies come over, I'm like, dude, you think the gas just gets here by itself at the trailer? No. Um, <laughs> so, pestle and mortar here, real simple. We got, uh, we'll start with some Thai chilies and some garlic. I always get asked, you wanna grab the salt for me, bro? Yeah, yeah. I always get asked, how much Thai chili do I put in there? And I say, you can always put more in, but you can't take more out. So. Start with whatever you want, right? And then just uh, kind of go from there. Everyone always says too, how hot is it? I always say, you just gotta like bite it to figure it out. Cause like chilies, some chilies, depending on the season, some, some chili, some season will be a lot spicier than others. Well, you know? that, yeah, no, that's yeah. the thing. It's like, they're not all made in the Twinkie factory. Yep. They're not identical. Mm -hmm. It's nature. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the, um, one of the things that I, I always talk about is the fact that with uh, Thai chilies, the, the, the the spice on the Thai chili is in the back, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you're eating it, you can eat all, like you can have this dish and you'll have the flavor. The flavor is like, and then slowly, like the crazy uncle, it comes and gets you right at the end there, <laughs> where you didn't expect. And like he's a knocking crazy on your, what? Uncle, you know, he oh. knocks on your door and he's like, hey, can I me in? And you're just like, hey, Uncle John's here. And he's only <laughs> supposed to be here once a year, but he's like, to drop by. That's kind of what the spice you get. Some of you are laughing because you guys know that uncle, or maybe you're that uncle. Uh, so, so he, you really it gets you on that back part, right? Uh, jalapenos, when you eat it, it's like, it's right there in the front. Yeah. It slaps you. It, it's you know, it's direct. You know, um, so um, like habaneros has that fruity, you know, flavor to it when you when you have that. So every every um, peppers they have different kinds of spice. You know, so not all peppers are created the same in spiciness, right? So we're just gonna um, throw some uh, garlic in here. We'll serve with some garlic. Again, these guys are amazing. They already chopped my garlic for me. Oh, is this how Bobby Flay feels like all the time? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Uh, so pretty, what we'll do? Pretty much. Yeah. What we'll do, and then we'll do the Thai chilies right in there. And what we'll do here is then you're just gonna make a paste with it, okay? And this is what I tell people. I did this demo once in front of high school kids and it splat right in my eye. And I was like, oh man, don't cry in front of the kids. And I'm like, I'm like, it's so cool. And everyone's laughing at me. So it feels bad. I'm gonna take a little salt. The salt's gonna help mash it together. Um, and you really wanna hear that sound, right? I, I do this technique now where I put my hand over it. Learn <laughs> real fast. I try not to look. Uh, I used to be like, I used to pound and then look. And I'm like, wait, if I stop, it's a lot safer. <laughs> okay, so you wanna really mash it together. Now here's the deal. This is the base of a lot of curries, right? So if you wanna make like a curry at home, especially like a Northern Thai curry, you do this, you put a galanga, ginger, lemongrass, and then you just go at it. And that's like the base. And you know, kefir for lime, that's the base. Okay, so you get this kind of paste, okay? So if you wanna take this, add some vinegar, like if, if you're making this, and you can stop right here, add some vinegar, some oil, and uh, add a little bit of, uh, of like oyster sauce in here, that becomes a marinade that you could throw over any kind of protein, mm. right? Real simple, right? It just, you know, so that's one of the, as we go, I'm gonna stop at every moment and I'm gonna kind of show you that out of this sauce, you can do this, out of this, you can do this, you know? Yeah. Okay. It's next, like pick your own adventure book. It, de it definitely is. <laughs> so like I said, mung food is simple. There's complexities in flavor, but it's simple. Like right there, you just made yourself basically a base for a vine uh, like a vinaigrette or something that you can, uh, you know, marinate, a marinade. So um, cilantro, you throw in some cilantro, and then you're gonna work that cilantro down. Now, using a pestle and mortar, I've always found that if you just put a towel on, it doesn't make as much noise, but if you wanna wake up, like if people are sleeping in your house, you want them to wake up, it's always a great excuse. Okay, so uh, yeah. we're gonna put a pause in this because I'm gonna toss the, um, the rice. So. Uh, great lesson I learned is it's steamed, so it's super hot. So you get this purple color in here. And what's really cool with it is uh, 
that if you have kids or you know grandkids or nieces and nephew, they dork out because it's purple. That's, that's the only story. Uh, the reason why we use the black rice is to get that purple color out the of it. Forbidden black rice. Yeah, the forbidden black rice. Ancient secrets. Um, but one of the reasons why we use it is like I like it because it has it's like wild rice. It has a little tooth to it, so it has a little bite. Mm -hmm. My mom doesn't really like that, but. It's my show, Mom. No. Uh, so what you try to do is like the top part is still a little crispy in the top part, but the bottom is so what you do is you just you toss it. You see what I'm doing there? But this is such a little amount, it's easy. So in some it really sticks together. As yeah, a it ball. does, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to just flip it around. Hence the name sticky. Yes. So okay, so I got that, you know, the top, I moved it to the bottom. And then we're just gonna put it back in here to keep it steaming a little bit. You also, if you take this right here, and again, add some oil, add like a cup of oil, add a half a cup of, um, of vinegar, and then add a little bit of honey. This also can become a vinaigrette, or it can also become a marinade. So it's gonna have that deep herbaceousness from, sure. the, um, sure. from the cilantro. And you so, get the sugars and the salts yep. going, so you yep. break down the tissue, yep. yeah. Again, you can go many routes from this. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do next here is then we're gonna put in the tomatoes. Now, what we do at the restaurant is we actually smoke our tomatoes. We have a smoker and we just throw the uh, tomatoes in the smoker. Uh, I like that kind of smoke taste. And the thing that we serve this on is we uh, grill whole, uh, whole striped bass. We get all over wood fire. And then when you get done with that, you make the sauce and we pour it right on top. So again, now, now, now as we're adding liquid in there, this is less of a smashing and more of a, a spinning, or, or sorry, more of a stirring. You get, uh, and then again, this is kind of like choose your own adventure. Um, if you want this um, more smooth, you can put this in a Vitamix, in a, in a, in a blender, you can blend it all up. Uh, if, if you want it chunky, you can just leave it like this. I like texture, so I'm just gonna leave it chunky. We're gonna add um, fish sauce in there. And then we add oyster sauce. So oyster, uh, my mom doesn't use oyster sauce for this, but again, it's my show. Uh, so oyster <laughs> sauce, uh, it's like, to me, I tell people it's like almost like a molasses, like a, like a, uh, like a umami molasses. And then lime juice. Love so that, lime yep, juice. Yep, lime juice. And then again, stir it up, and that's it. You're pretty much done. So here's. Oh yeah, that looks good. Again, it, you know, uh, I talked to my buddy Jose and we talk about this and what what we're saying, what I told him, I'm like, dude, I'm basically it's like a salsa rojo, right? But it's got, you know, the oyster sauce, the fish sauce, you know, it's got this complexity and flavors, but it's, it's simple, right? And it's a, you're right, it's a slow yeah. revealing yep. heat, not even a heat, a warmth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a nice balance, chef. So on this one, we have Mama Vang's hot sauce. That's, this is Mama Vang's hot yeah, sauce? Yeah, it's Mama Vang's hot sauce, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's smoky, it's, in, it's, it's, it's a deeper, smokier flavor. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, you scramble eggs in the morning, you throw that in the top of scramble egg, uh, mm -hmm. steaks, uh, any of those. So uh, my mom- That's very añejo. Yeah. Ooh. yeah, yeah. Again, this season is a lot spicier than last. Last season wasn't that spicy. Again, it's all about, it's all I about mean, the spice. I mean, it's super rich. Mm -hmm. I'm also having other experiences. You're fine, you're fine. <laughs> so. It's good, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm we'll not just it. saying that because he is here. No, I. But wow. So, so yeah, those are the hot sauces that we have up. Um, I think it's meant to go with things. Definitely. <laughs> so this is ready. And what I'll do here Look at is. how beautiful, God, that smells great, dude. Yeah. yeah. That smells like dessert. Yeah, it's that well. You can you so can totally. Good. You guys ever had mango sticky rice? Sure. But basically, that's what this is. Like they'll just use sticky rice like this, and they'll take the mango, cut up the mango, the ripe mango, put it on top, and wrap it in banana leaves, and just steam it. And or you pour a little coconut milk on top of it too, and then you just steam it. Yeah. You've got mango sticky rice. Yeah. Right? Or breakfast so, on a Saturday. Yeah. When no one's watching. So. Yeah. So it has this beautiful color, and we'll let it. You know, when it's hot, it, it falls, but it has this beautiful, beautiful color on it. And then we have is... I just wanna stick my head in there. Yeah. It smells so good. So we'll, we have the braised mustard greens here. Yeah. So we'll put that on the bottom and uh, we'll grab one of these and then we'll... Look at how beautiful that is already. Yeah, let me just get this. And if you're getting a cold, this with yeah, the and I mean this is chunks of ginger alone. Yep. 
and Rock this your world. this literally is my um, kind of my childhood, and like just you know, yeah. Broth. I'm sure your mom served it this way too, exactly on a big plate like <laughs> yeah. that. She was more like it was just all in bowls and platters in the front. So what one of the things that my father taught me is this idea when we were kids um uh we would fight a lot brothers you know we we're just dumb and we would fight and my my dad would always say when you say this is mine you actually have less but when you say this is ours you have more and he always implored that into us and he's he, and, and the way that people eat in some restaurants is like this is my plate this is my dish and, and what we really try to break through that with the food we do is we actually say well this is ours so when you come order food, it's actually for everyone. You know, it's not really yours, it's, it's everyone. And then you actually have more when you say this is ours. So we just encourage people. So people are like, oh, what should I eat? And I'm like, just order the menu and just sit down and pick at it. You know, and so that's kind of what we really encourage. I'm not sure the chicken's all done yet, but we can always, ooh, we can also fake it. On the it. whole, yeah, I like to eat the way you just described and typically we'll order more than, well, maybe a little gluttonous, we'll order three or four things for two people, so if you want to try a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And we'll share it. Look at that beautiful chicken. Yeah. I can't believe how, I made a roast chicken literally last night, mm -hmm. what I call the North African roast chicken, because I mm -hmm. throw in a bunch of, you know, cumin and all kinds of things with the butter. That was so fast. Yeah, I mean, again, if, <laughs> I feel like I'm on a TV show here, in 30 minutes, we have made a meal. No, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but literally, this is one of the funnest ways to do it. And, it. and again, if it's getting cold and you can't get outside to grill, just, you know, brick, you know, um, uh, brick press this guy. And you can just feel that. That's like, and this is from like sitting out, uh, uh, letting it dry out in 24 hours. You don't have to do that, but it really helps with that skin. And was you know? it just air or a little bit of salt on top of it? That's just a little salt, yep. Yeah. No, that's oh, so, so air and salt or just air? To uh, dry it out. Uh, just, just air. Just air. Yeah, and if you really want, you can do salt too. Yeah. You know, um, if you want to get all fancy, you can do like baking soda, and then like it dries it out really, and then you have, sure. but you have to wipe it off with vinegar. To right. Do, uh, it's too much it's work. Too much I don't know. Yeah. Well, our people, we're jungle agents. Okay. So wow. This just, is the big reveal, everyone. Yeah. This is what you've come for. I don't know. This is what he's gonna do. Look at that. Oh, that's not bad. So. Uh, we'll probably go in a couple more minutes, but can yeah. we pretend? We, we pretend, right? Yeah. We okay. pretend. Yeah. The legs are good. The middle's going to need a little bit yeah. of love. But so basically, I usually just like cutting into big. Gotta get me one of those tooks. The what? One of those tooks. That's oh, what yeah. they're originally called in China. Yeah. One of those cleavers. I gotta get me one yeah. of those. Yeah. And then so we'll just kind of throw these on here. Yeah. And then, oh, see, this is how you burn off your finger. And this is basically it. And again, like I said, you can uh, easily serve uh, dinner this way. It's a super easy way to do dinner. You got your, you know, we got your rice, we got our vegetable in there, we got our protein, and then we got our hot sauce, and then we even have our broth. So it's super easy. If you're doing this at home, like um, probably an hour, you know, you did mm -hmm. the longest thing is that get, my problem was today was I should just start it on the chicken. But, you know, if you get going on the chicken right away, you, you about an hour, you get a whole dinner. You know, here, here, I guess, like I said, every dish has a narrative, right? This is kind of the narrative. I love eating whole chicken like that because of one reason. When I was in high school, Friday nights, uh, I was on, I played football. I love football. My parents, my, my parents, especially my mom, my dad never could make it to the games because he was working late, right? Or if it was an away game or whatever. So... So, but every night, I, every Friday night, around 10.30, whatever, when we get home from the game, there was always a fresh pot of rice, and there was one of those, like, you know, festival foods, like roast here sweet chicken, you know what I'm talking about? It was a three-pound one, always sitting on the counter. And no matter how good I did or how bad I mm -hmm. did at the game, at the end of the day, like my father always said, you're my son and I love you. You didn't have to perform for me. You didn't have to do this. You always come home, and there's always going to be food here for you. You always want to be fed. It wasn't until I went off to college that my dad would say, it was either a chicken or one of those big like hoagies, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you buy like eight, six bucks. And my dad would always say, I kind of miss buying that stuff. You know, when I went off to college, he's like, I, mm -hmm. I love just grabbing one of those. And I always knew that there was always food for me when I came home. And so all of this, everything we're doing, even now we're in the stages of building our own brick and mortar. We have a bunch of great things coming our way. Uh, we, you know, 
if you go on our website, uh, unionmonkitchen.com, you can sign up for a newsletter. We'll tell everything. You know, I signed up today. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll hear everything about the brick and mortar that's coming through right now. All of this is the legacy of my mom and dad. Like, I wouldn't be here without them. And this is not some kind of ch cheesy, like, uh, shtick or whatever. This is, this is all I know. And so when these two people who have given up their life so that I can have life, there's n the only way that I can say I'm sorry for being a silly kid and being embarrassed. I'm sorry for, you know, um, denying you guys, you know, when I was younger. I'm sorry for running away. I feel like this is my, like, I'm sorry It's your amends. Yeah. yeah. And then also it is my, our way of it was saying, hey, this is your legacy, mom and dad. Like, you guys might, there might not, like, people might not know about the things you've done, but this is it. I, I want to end with this last story. My, about two years ago, two, almost three years ago, my dad had a really bad work accident. He, he fell off a, like, he, he builds home, slipped off a roof uh, ladder, cracked his head. He, they, they, um, they, he had brain injury. They, they put him out in, um, they put him out in uh, Marshfield. He went to Marshfield Clinic. He was in the ICU in Marshfield for about a month, you know, and he's sitting there. And I have all my siblings, they flew in from the other country. They all came to visit my dad. And, and I, I lived like three hours away, right? I, I couldn't make myself go. I kept having excuses. Oh, I got to work. I got to do this, you know? So he was, he was in the ICU for like three days. You know, everybody was there, family. And I was like, I couldn't go. And I asked my mom, I'm like, how, how bad is it? My, mom, my mom's like, they, the doctors don't know. It's touch and go. He's all, you know. I remember going to the hospital and I'm always, I'm always a little eerie of ICU area. Like, you know, it's just that bad experience, right? So it's, again, it's, all the lights are off and I go in my father's room and he's sitting there and my mom, remember my mom telling me, my mom said, ask him if he knows your name, you know, because they weren't sure about his memory. It was, you know, it's head injury, it's brain trauma, it's a lot of stuff. I walk in and I look at my dad and so here's this old warrior who's like laying in the bed, right? And he's all like tubed up. I've never seen my dad this vulnerable before, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he's got tubes everywhere, and he's got his head bandaged up, and he's just laying there. And this is my hero, right? This is the guy who's indestructible. Um, and, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, hey, dad, do you, do you know who I am? And he's all groggly, and he's like, I think, he's like, I think so. I think you're my son. That's all he could say to me. And in that moment, like, it, it turned for me where it's like, like, this is not how a warrior is supposed to go. Slipping on a dumb ladder, right? Like, you're, you're supposed to have a more, like, if he's having a death, it's supposed to be with an anthem, like, right? Where, where we could celebrate his life. Not because he slipped, not because of some dumb work accident. That changed the way I thought about, hey, like, I really want to get this restaurant built. I really want people to know who he is. So that was two and a half years ago, it was been the thing that pushes me through and when it gets cold, when it gets hot, when I get tired, when I don't feel like soaking stupid rice sometimes at night, when I don't feel like doing that, or washing dishes. Like, I remember that man laying up on that bed. And it's like, that's not how warriors are supposed to go out. And so, yeah, so I, I thank Kyle, uh, thank uh, Madison College for us to be able to come here and tell our story, my story, my parents' story, uh, for you to join us tonight. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys uh, are ready. Thanks, buddy.